Okay, hello everyone, welcome to the video. In this one, we're going to show you how to set up a motor vehicle fixed asset purchase in Zero. So there's three parts to this video. First, we're going to have to set up the chart of accounts for the new fixed asset. Then we're going to have to record the purchase in the invoice register. And then lastly, we'll set up the asset in the fixed asset register so that you can track your depreciation in Zero if you want to do that. All right, so let's say we bought a motor vehicle and I've got a copy of an invoice here. Let's have a look at it. And we can see here it was for $33,685 with 2901 GST. So if we go have a look at our balance sheet here, or actually rather our chart of accounts, and we go to assets, scroll down, and we can see here, we got some fixed asset type accounts down the bottom here. We have office equipment and we have computer equipment. So there's no account here set up for a motor vehicle, a car that has been purchased for our business. So we're going to have to set that up. And not only do we have to set up the actual asset account, we have to set up the accumulated depreciation account as well. The accumulated depreciation account is the other side of the transaction the credit side of the transaction that gets recorded when you process your depreciation on an asset. So you'll debit the depreciation account and credit the accumulated depreciation account. And then that comes off the value of the total asset to write down the value of the asset, the carrying value on your balance sheet. All right, so we can see the number sequence here. We've got 710, 720. So we're gonna make the motor vehicle 730 and we'll go add account. Fixed asset, 730. And we're going to call it motor vehicle. Some people like to name the asset accounts motor vehicle at cost. That is an option as well. But we're just going to stay uniform with how it's done in the demo file at this point. So we won't have the at cost at the end. We'll just have motor vehicle on its own. GST on expenses. If you're using the full uh, GST settings rather than the simpler BAS settings, you'll have an account or rather a tax type here for GST on capital. So if there's a GST on capital, you, you'll use that. But we're using the simpler BAS and we're just going to put it to GST on expenses. And we'll go save. There you can see it there. And now we're going to have to set up the less accumulated depreciation on motor vehicle account. So we'll do that. Add account. Again, it's fixed asset. Code is 731. And we just picked that up because we had 730 for the asset account. And we're just following the number sequence that has been used for the other asset accounts. So we're going to go less accumulated depreciation on. And tax type is going to be BAS excluded because there's no GST on accumulated depreciation. We'll save that. And there it is. So now we can go ahead and record the purchase. So let's go to business, bills to pay. You could also do this as a spend money transaction, but if you want to have it in your invoice register, then you can do it as a bill. So we'll go new bill. And we'll just make up a supplier name here, the date, and we'll say purchase of new vehicle. Of course, you'd put in more information here normally, but just for the sake of the example, it doesn't really matter. The reference field would just be the invoice number. And we're going to go back and have a look at our sample invoice here. So we can see it's got GST of 2901. 
and 77 cents. And that adds up to 31,919 if we gross that out. But the cost is 33,685. So that tells us that not everything has GST on it. So we can see here, complimentary full tank of fuel had no GST. High risk zone TAC, the registration had no GST and stamp duty had no GST. So that's why it's not a full 10%. So we need to, need to account for that in zero. The GST amount is 290177. So what we do is we go 290177 multiplied by 11 to gross up that portion. The account is the motor vehicle account that we just put, that we just set up, not motor vehicle expenses. That's on the P&L. The motor vehicle fixed asset account, this one here, 730. GST on expenses, region is optional. That's just some job coding, some tracking. Not relevant in this example. And we can see here, well, that's not right either, 3191. So it should be 290177. And the reason it's not getting the correct GST down here is because we're tax exclusive, not tax inclusive. There we go, 290177. And we can see here, 290177. But the total only adds up to 31919, and we need to bring it up to 33685. So this is just the non-GST portion. And we need to put in the difference. 3368570. So we'll use the inbuilt calculator. 3368570 minus 3199947. Enter. Same GL account. But this is going to be GST free because you can see here the GST has changed. It's higher than we need it to be. So we go GST free. And now we can see the total is 3368570. 3368570 3, and GST 290177. 290177. So that's exactly what we want. So we're going to record that. And we'll just have to put in a due date. All right, so there it is. And if we run a balance sheet, we'll be able to see the X GST cost of this vehicle. So the X GST cost of this vehicle should be 33685, 70 minus the GST, 2901, 77. So this figure should be on the balance sheet, 378393. And there it is, 378393 motor vehicle. All right, so we've recorded the purchase of the vehicle. Now we have to set up the fixed asset register, which is an optional step. You only really need to set up the fixed asset register in zero if you want to track depreciation inside zero. Some people prefer to track their depreciation on a spreadsheet and then load a journal at the end of the end of the financial year to record the depreciation. There's nothing wrong with that, but we're going to show you how to set up the fixed asset register within zero. So let's open up a new tab and we go accounting, scroll down to fixed assets. And of course what you can do here in the bill is you can attach using this icon here, your invoice, so it's always there, and you've got a solid audit trail. But that's, of course, optional as well. And we're going to go new asset. So this vehicle happens to be a uh, Haval uh, Jolion, I believe it's called. Your asset number here. That can be anything, really but you'd probably want to keep it uniform to the other asset numbers. Purchase date was the 18th. Purchase price needs to be the X GST portion, which we already ascertained was 3783.93, this number here. So we're going to put that in, 3783.93. Warranty expiry is optional. Serial number is optional. So you can put in your rego and uh, engine number and all that kind of stuff if you want. Asset type, there's nothing here for motor vehicle, so we're going to set up a new one.
asset account, motor vehicle that we set up before, the 730 account, accumulated depreciation will be that other one we set up before, the 731 account. Depreciation is a standard account used for all assets. And then we go book depreciation default. So we have a few different options here for the depreciation straight line and diminishing value full depreciation at purchase. If you're not sure the difference between these, you can talk to your accountant or you can talk to us. For the sake of this example, we'll just set it up as a straight line. And your rate, you can say, is it 20% straight line a year? Or you could say effective life is, I don't know, 10 years, which would be 10%, five years, which would be 20%, or you can go onto the ATO website and find out the uh, standard uh, depreciation effective life of motor vehicles. So we'll put it as eight years and we'll go save. Region is our tracking code, which isn't applicable for this example. Description, you can put in any other detail here about the vehicle. So we've got our book value, depreciation start date, 18th of December. That's the day we purchased the vehicle. Straight line, eight years, and then we go register. So now that vehicle is registered. There it is there, FA007, 3783.93. There it is, 3783.93. And then you can come into zero and you can run your depreciation as much as you want. You wouldn't do it any more than monthly, but you may only do it annually. So you can do that in here. You can also run your tax basis depreciation as well. But like I said earlier, a lot of people prefer to track their depreciation in a spreadsheet and then simply post a journal into zero at the end of financial year. It just comes down to personal preference and how you like to run your books. So that's it, pretty much it for the video guys. Now you know how to set up a fixed asset account for a motor vehicle or any type of fixed asset really, how to purchase a motor vehicle with the correct GST amount, posting it to the correct GL account, and then how to add it into the fixed asset register and run depreciation inside and outside zero, depending on your preference. If you wanna see more on zero, we've got a bunch of videos up on the channel relating to zero. And other things, if you want to book in a training session, head over to the link in the description. Go over to our website, drop us a message, and we'll book in a training session. Other than that, I hope you enjoyed the video and learned something. We'll catch you later.